For the continent as a whole, things are looking okay, pretty healthy. Growth of about 2.4% this year, followed by 2.6% in 2012, as you can see now. Move into the Eurozone, the picture is not as positive, a little weaker. You could expect the block to grow by 1.6% this year, according to the report. And things are weaker still for those peripheral countries. Greece won't actually move out of recession until 2012, as you can see there. IMF says Portugal will stay in recession even longer than that, perhaps even shrinking in 2012. By comparison, take a look at Germany forging ahead. Europe's biggest economy is set to grow by more than 2% this year and indeed next year as well. So the IMF report was released in Frankfurt. We can go there now. Our economics editor, David Tweed, is there to talk us through. Well, you are, you're standing there with the man who's actually behind this report, David. I, I am, Mariam. <laughs> Uh, Antonio Borges is here. The IMF report came out and have outlined that the, the real risk for Europe is the situation in the periphery. And so, uh, Mr. Borges, I, I really want to start asking about that. And I want to ask about Greece in particular. The IMF has got an audit going on in Greece, along with the ECB and the European Commission. Now, what are the objectives of that audit right now? It's not really an audit. It's what we call a program review. Our programs have reviews every three months, so this is a routine process. We are very careful to monitor what's developing, and depending on the outcome of these reviews, we decide to continue or discontinue the program. But is the review going to also look into the solvency of the Greek government at the every moment? Every time. Every time you will look into the solvency? Every time. All, so our, if you programs, find... our programs always assume that that is sustainable, the country is solvent, otherwise we would have to stop. Oh, you assume before the program begins that debt is sustainable? When the program is put in place, it is based on a scenario that uh, guarantees debt sustainability. Of course, debt sustainability depends on the program being executed as it should be. What will, what will happen then if, the, if, the, if the, the review that you're undertaking right now finds out that Greece is debt is not sustainable? Well, in every case, if our review is negative, the program has to stop. I'm not saying this is what will happen in Greece. In fact, we just had the latest review in February, which was positive, and the program could continue. In June, we'll have the formal decision made by the IMF board, as well as by the authorities in Europe, and I cannot prejudge what that will be. But at the moment, it looks as if uh, uh, you know, Greece is lagging behind its targets of the program. That's certainly been the way that the market is interpreting it. Today, we've seen the yield on, uh, on two-year notes in Greece rise to another record, more than 24%. Jean-Claude Juncker says that Greece is probably going to have to have another program or an extension to the program. Would you agree with that? Well, I think that, number one, these programs are never executed 100% exactly as we expect them to. So they're all... Uh, always deviations, some small, some bigger, and when there are deviations, corrective action has to be put in place. For example, at the latest review, we found that there was some slippage in one area or, or another. On the other hand, there was a new development, which was the privatization program, which more than compensated for that, so we could have a positive review in spite of some slippage. But the privatization program is lagging by, you've, it's been announced, nothing seems to have happened, there's no movement in Greece. Well, we'll have to see how quickly the Greeks can move on this. It's not, we're not saying that it is easy. It's uh, simple. It's uh, sorry, complex. It is, uh, takes time. Some of these uh, assets will not be privatized immediately. Others can be sold right away. So we'll have to see how it develops over time. But let me go back to your previous question. Uh, whether or not we need more time or we need more money or we need an additional program depends essentially on the Greeks. It's, it is their initiative. They'll have to decide what is it that they want. Let me turn quickly to the Portuguese program. The interest rate that the IMF is going to receive is lower than the interest rate for the portion of that 78 billion that the Eurozone is going to get. How much of a concern is it to you that the interest rate is going to be too high for Portugal, a country with chronically slow growth, uh, for it to be able to actually get out of its problems? Well, the interest rate that's practiced by the IMF is always exactly the same for every country. There are some very specific rules, and that's how it is. What the Europeans want or don't want to charge is for them to decide, and I, I don't have much reason to talk about it. Uh, it is much lower than the interest rate, whatever the Europeans do, much lower than the, than the interest rate that the Portuguese were facing until recently. So this will, in any case, represent a great deal of relief for Portugal. Uh, and finally, the key, as you correctly said, the key issue for Portugal is how quickly can we restore growth? Uh, how quickly can we make this economy more competitive? 
and, and therefore the real problem is how do we reallocate resources to exports, to the tradable sector, and get the country going again. That's far more important than one or more or, or, or less. Which, which is a key question, but I want to skip it because I really want to ask you what Europe ought to be doing in order to prevent future crises. That's uh, really the lesson we have to draw from here. Clearly, this crisis was unexpected. Uh, monetary union developed very fast in ways that uh, we're now learning how it happened. Uh, clearly, a lot of it is because in these three countries, capital flew in the wrong direction, went into sectors that had nothing to do with competitive, in some cases, real estate and so forth. And we have to make sure that whenever countries benefit from capital that, is, that comes from elsewhere, that capital is invested productively. So Europe is now focusing more on competitiveness, on avoiding uh, unsustainable imbalances and looking more at long-term What efficiency. about for financial integration? More or less? More financial integration would be important. If in these countries beyond debt flows, credit flows, we also had equity flows, we also had countries taking positions by acquiring assets cross-border, a lot of these problems would be much smaller. And uh, you're also talking about mergers for banks. Is that something else we're needing here in Europe? Absolutely. There is no doubt that the easiest way to solve banking problems is to have good, strong banks take over small uh, or weaker banks. And that can happen. happens everywhere. In Europe, it needs to happen cross-border. Quick question on monetary policy. Is the ECB already moving to raise rates too early? Well, the ECB is gradually moving towards going back to normal. Uh, we think that's a desirable and inevitable process. We also recommend that it stays gradual. Uh, overall, the euro is very strong. Um, fiscal policy is uh, uh, tightening. Okay. So thank monetary you very policy much. I must interrupt you there, but th thank you very much for speaking to us there. Uh, this is David Tweed in Brussels. Back to you uh, in the studio.